Okay, welcome to session four of Momentum Fitness. And the topic of today's session is get up and move. It's all about exercise and all about movement. And once again, during this session, we're gonna go visit with another expert, which you are really gonna enjoy. But I wanted to take a few moments and set the pace for what we're gonna talk about together today. You know, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10, 31, that everything we do should be to the glory of God. James, though, adds a very interesting verse in James 1.22. It says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. We want to be doers, not just hearers. And so that's why it's important in the Momentum Fitness Challenge that you've focused on a goal, that you've gotten involved in, 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 in good relationships in a life group, and that you take action, that you do something. And so we want to be doers of the word, not just hearers of the word. If you want to be transformed, you have to put things into action. That's a choice that each and every one of us can make, and I hope you're making it too. Before we go to our special interview, I want uh, you to join with me in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. We visited this passage several times in our study, but I want to bear in on it a little more intently um, with you right now in this session, okay? So turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and we're going to pick it up in verse 12 and read through the end of the chapter, just eight verses. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not helpful. You can eat whatever you want. You can sit around as much as you want, but it may not be helpful for you. So just because you can do it, and we are free in Christ to do almost anything as long as, long as it's not uh, immoral or illegal. Um, but that doesn't mean that everything's the right choice for you to make. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. You're not going to be a slave to anything. Verse 13, foods are for the stomach and the stomach for foods, but God will destroy both it and them. Now the body is not meant for sexual immor immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. Verse 14, God both raised up the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. Verse 15, do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then, make, shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Certainly not. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with him, with her, for the two, he says, shall become one flesh. One of the first things you want to know as we read that passage of scripture is that your body, all of you, is connected to the rest of the body of Christ. And when we make poor decisions, and, and in this passage of scripture, it's talking specifically about making immoral decisions. When we do that, it not only affects us, but it affects other people also. It affects the rest of the body of Christ. When we make poor decisions about our health, it affects other people, which some of you guys know that firsthand. Some of you have watched somebody that you love uh, get sick and really suffer as a part of really poor decisions that they've made. So what we do makes a difference and we're all connected in the body of Christ. Let's press on. Verse 17. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Let's be joined to Christ. Here's a pretty strong verse in verse 18. Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside of his body, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. There's, there's one thing that certainly we don't talk about much in our culture, but sexual immorality is actually a violation of how you're created in God. God has better things for you. He has a better way. Turn to the person next to you and say, God's ways are always better. Just go ahead and tell them right now. God's ways are always better. Let's go to verse 19. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? The second point I want to remind you about today is that the Holy Spirit lives in your body, that the Holy Spirit is the one who owns it. And because your body is a temple, it belongs to God, let's take 
care of it. I think we visited that in one of our sessions pretty intimately. But let's take care of it. Let's, let's have it function in the right way. Let's fill it up with the right things and let's take care of the body. So uh, it is the dwelling place of God. And so we want to be free, uh, energetic, enthusiastic, in order to live our life for God the way that he wants us to. And then the final verse in verse 20 says, For you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Jesus bought your body on the cross. When, you, when he gave you salvation, he took over ownership of your life as well. And I'm so glad for me that he did. Man, I know that given to my own ways, my life would be a disaster. Uh, I would be on my own. I would probably be lucky to still be alive at this point in my life. But because Jesus is so good and so gracious to me, and because I regularly and routinely return to him and say, Lord, fix me, heal me, touch me, fill me up, correct me, because all those things happen, it helps my life get adapted to the things of God and to walk the ways that he wants us to, to walk. So our body is the Lord. We are the temple of God. And because of that, we've got to take care of it. And one of the things we have to do is we have to get up and move. We were made for action. My wife, Sherry, who is actually uh, 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 quite an expert on body movement and the connection between learning the way, the way our brain processes information and our movement will say just that, that when you move, you learn better. That's why sometimes those of you that are parents of active children, especially little boys that, that are stuck in a classroom sitting in a chair, it's not always the best way for them to learn. And so sometimes if you can uh, get an alternative environment where they're learning while they're moving, they will actually do better. And uh, uh, so as we live in him and as we get up and move and go and uh, don't just become couch potatoes we're going to find us being healthier more energetic ready to go i am really excited right now to take you to our interview with our special guest here we go okay so now i'm on location with the amazing diana rudolph and uh, we're going to be talking about um we're going to be talking about fitness, in, especially in regards to our physical activity. Remember, the title of the session is Get Up and Move. And um, the only personal trainers I've ever worked out with, personal trainers, are Diana Rudolph sitting right here and her husband, Zach, which you've met as well, too. And uh, so this is a special thing. Now, I'm also sitting with the mother of, at this point in time, of a one-month-old. Diana, tell us about your little boy. Oh, Ezra is absolutely beautiful. Um, such a great blessing. So amazing. Um, he's wonderful. Uh, absolutely love. Are you getting any sleep? Oh, my goodness. Well, that's a challenge. Um, no, every two to three hours, I'm up all night. Um, but it's so worth it. And just learning how to be a new mommy. And Zach is doing a great job, too, with um, learning how to raise this precious little boy. Now that I have such little amount of sleep, I really understand. But sleep is huge. Um, we need a rest. Our The Lord created Sabbath, a time for rest and for a purpose. And our bodies need a good, adequate amount of sleep to re-energize, restore, rejuvenate everything that we've done all day long. And so, um, especially with the world of fitness and wellness and exercise, I mean, if you have a very stressful day at work or whatever you do for a living, and then on top of that, you do add more physical stress on your body by exercising, and finally you get home and you're not resting enough, whether it's seven, eight hours or however much rest you personally need, yeah. you're actually doing your body um, damage because you're not giving it enough time to restore and kind of refuel itself. Yeah. And so we all need really good sleep. And many times people that are on weight loss programs or very intense exercise programs and lack adequate amounts of rest actually see weight gain. Um, yeah, it increases this cortisol and different hormones in our body that can have a complete reverse effect. And you can see plateau and you can get sick and less energy. So all these things. So you all need to rest. <laughs> you need to really rest. <laughs> well, Diana, there's a lot of areas of expertise that you could talk about. By the way, um, I'm going to ask you if you just list off some practical things about how do we get up and move. And uh, also, I forgot to ask you as I got 
preoccupied with you being a new mom, but tell them a little bit about what you do right now and, and uh, so they know you. And then just go ahead and talk to, talk, uh, talk to us about um, physical activity. All right, well, um, I have been in the world of fitness now for over 12 years as a personal trainer, fitness instructor, and currently I'm teaching at Azusa Pacific University as a exercise science professor, um, teaching undergrad students um, basics of exercise, kines- physiology, kinesiology, students that want to go into sports medicine, physical therapy, fitness, physical education, wow. et cetera. So I, it's a huge passion of mine. I absolutely love it. I, um, I love the title, Get Up and Move. Um, the Lord made us to yeah. move yeah. and not made us you know, to sit and just yeah. be still all day. And it's a great way to be able to take care of these amazing gifts, these bodies that God has given us by learning how to just be good to ourselves yeah. and be healthy and get up and move. <laughs> well, many times people have this misconception that exercise needs to be so complicated or you need fancy equipment and you need to go to the best gym or, or I just don't know what to do. So I'm not going to exercise because I don't know how to use those machines. And I always like to tell people, whatever fitness level you're at, keep it simple. Um, we have two legs, many of us, and we can get out and go walk. And walking can do wondrous things for your body and for your overall health from your flexibility and your posture. And it's so simple. You don't need a gym. You don't need to, you know, belong to some kind of club to go walking. And so for wherever you're at in your fitness level, if you currently do nothing, I would say make it a point to try um, as little as 15 minutes a day. 15 minutes can really kickstart that engine in your body and get up and go outside, enjoy the beautiful summer sunshine that we have now and get out and just walk, get to know your neighbors or maybe um, find a workout buddy. I always tell people, don't do these things by yourselves. Um, we have we need accountability in our lives for so many different areas, and fitness is one of them. And sometimes you get so pumped and so encouraged when you, whether it's a family member, a friend, a neighbor, you met somebody new, and you're using you know your exercise time to get to know each other. Um, anyways, find a workout buddy and find something simple as simple as walking to get started. And then from there, you can start making your exercise a little bit more complex, more intense, more vigorous. But first, start with the basics. Walking, and then for example, like my little son now, Ezra, can't, you know, can barely hold his little body up. But as he starts to grow, he's going to learn how to crawl. And then after crawling, walking, and then running, etc. Same thing with our bodies now. So if we've been still for a long time and haven't really done much exercise, We need to get up and slowly start moving by simple things like walking and stretching. Stretching. Don't forget to stretch. Stretching. Talk to us about that. Oh, stretching. We'll do a whole lecture on this. (laughs) But our bodies need to be able to move in very limber and flexible ways. Um, The older we get, the more maybe people think the more inflexible or unable to move um, we get. And many times that's true because we don't take time to really stretch, especially, for example, during um, exercises, I see a lot of people just kind of do one of these numbers like, okay, I'm ready to go. And they hit the gym or they they start running. And then after they just maybe bend down, touch their toes and they're done. But we really need to take time to thoroughly stretch out our muscles. And a lot of times our muscles are these tight bundles of muscle fibers that get so knotted up Mm -hmm. and we need to release and stretch them out. And it's almost like giving yourself a massage when Mm -hmm. you stretch. And that's going to help your posture, your flexibility, your ability to reach and not stay stuck in a certain position. Um, And yeah, and as we age, it's really going to help our body and and our alignment and everything, um, the way our body moves. So, so to go back to your original question to, you know, how can we get started? I'd say, like I said, start off with keeping your exercises simple, such as walking. From there, try to start maybe jogging, even if it's jogging one minute, walking three. Jog one, walk three. And then you start moving that up. Jog for two minutes, walk three. Jog for three minutes, you know, et cetera. And so you can eventually jog for 10 minutes straight. And then from there, you can also, you know, and start getting that even more intense. Sign up for a 5K. Maybe you've never, ever done a race or thought you could even do something like that. But sometimes when we give ourselves these challenges, or even if you're not going to jog the 5K, hey, I'm going to try to walk this thing and cross that finish line. It is such an awesome accomplishment to do something like that when you thought that would never be in my wildest of dreams to to sign up. And a lot of 5Ks out there, races, et cetera, they are for great causes for, you know, um, leukemia research for breast cancer, et cetera. So then you could also be helping, you know, a really good cause out. So 
Okay, that's a great, <laughs> great idea. Okay, so I'm going to, if I've been doing nothing, I'm going to start with walking and start to try to build though with the purpose. I'm going to start with a few minutes, build it up as quick as I can, and then depending on my health, then I'm going to add a, a jog, even if it's a short jog, just start stretching myself. I'm going to start with walking. I'm going to be have rested well. I'm going to stretch, okay? And then what else is critical to our physical health, our, our, our body health? Well, um, the main two components that we hear in exercise are cardio training, cardiovascular training, uh -huh. and resistance training, strength training. And uh, what that does for our bodies is, you know, our, our hearts are just a huge muscle, just like our quads are, our biceps, et cetera. But I mean, it's a, one of the most important muscles that makes our bodies move and live and go. Right. So when we do cardio training, um, we really need to remember it's not just about jogging or running. A lot of people say, you know, oh, I got to do my cardio today, so I'm going to go run the on the treadmill. There's so many different styles of cardio you can do. So when I'm, you know, talking to people that are just maybe new to, to exercise or coming back after being an ex high school athlete or, or just haven't been, um, in the fitness world for some time, I like to say along with, you know, starting sl small, like walking, start implementing more styles, different styles of cardio training. And that could look like, uh, different things, swimming, playing basketball, soccer, um, going to a class at the gym. Like sometimes a lot of people say, well, I have a gym membership, but I just don't know how to use those machines. Uh -huh. So I always tell them, well, there's all these fitness classes you can take. There's cycling classes, the spin classes, yeah. there's cardio kickboxing, there's weight training. And a lot of times you go into those classes and you have a coach leading you. So no, no guessing work done. You just follow along. Yeah. And if you take a class and you don't like it, okay, fine. Don't go back to that class. Go to another what one. What about the dance classes yeah. that all the ladies are going to? Oh, Zumba. Huge fit, right? Huge uh, <laughs> fad right now. So that's really fun too if you're into so that. or. fit into cardio? Oh, all that is cardio. All anytime it's aerobic. Anytime you're getting your heart rate up, yeah. um, and, and you're you're sweating and you're pumping and you're moving through. I mean, that's definitely a, a aerobic training, cardio training. Now, resistance training is using your body weight or extra weight to fight against gravity and start building your muscles and building uh, the strength, strength endurance in your overall How body. Do the two fit together. How does resistance? help help cardio or vice versa or do they fit together oh they absolutely do i mean the more you do your aerobic training the more endurance you're going to have to maybe be able to lift quite harder and vice versa if you are starting to lift more weight and get stronger muscles and you're going to be able to last longer in that cardio bout of exercise that you do so they go hand in hand because you need to work out your heart and lungs which you'll do great through aerobic training yeah as well as work the rest of your muscles that are our prime movers, anything from you know your the big muscles that we tend to exercise um, that you see a lot of um, videos that stress on, or maybe workout magazines, they'll say, you know, work your quads, work your glutes, work your chest, your pecs, your back. So we hit the major muscle groups because right. those are the ones that make us move and, and do the, the bigger movements. And I mean, picking up groceries, you know, or, or picking up a baby or something. But you you got to remember that you could do resistance training very easily as well. You don't need fancy weights or equipment. If you have a pair of dumbbells at home, awesome. Grab them, use them. Or I like to say too, if you have a backpack, put some books in there, throw that backpack on and get some added weight to you. And you could do squats, you could do lunges, you could do lots of different things here at the house or in your backyard or at a park that you can mimic those same exercises that many of those machines at the gym do. Um, so later on, I'm going to give you guys a challenge and maybe within life groups, you guys can do this little quick circuit that Zach and I created that just uses body weight. You don't need to use any other fancy weights, dumbbells. If you want dumbbells to make it harder, go for it. But um, this challenge, if you came to equip, Zach and I showed it to, um, to our audience that we had at our workshop, but it's a quick 10 minute workout that you guys can do. You could even cut it in half and do five minutes, but basically we have lined up 10 different exercises and all exercises that you can do without any fancy equipment, just you yourself and gravity on the floor. And it's very simple. You're going to do each exercise for only 40 seconds. So for example, 40 seconds of squats. Then you rest for 20 seconds, good amount of rest, and you move on to the next exercise, and that's it. So 10 exercises. You will need one jump rope. If you don't have a jump rope, you could do jumping jacks. But you and your life group can do this 
in the living room. You can go to the backyard if it's a nice evening and do it outside. Um, I challenge you guys 10 minutes or cut it in half. Do 20 seconds instead of the 40. And you can do a five-minute workout. And it's a full-body workout. So you're going to be doing some cardio through the jumping jacks or the jump rope. And you're going to be doing your strength training through the different exercises that we've planned out. So it's your 10-minute quick workout that, um, by the way, along with all the benefits that I'm sure you guys know, I haven't even hit on you know, all the different benefits that we get from exercise. Cardio and resistance training really helps improve more memory. More, It may, wakes up your mind it gets your brain more alert more focused and it makes you feel just more energetic so before your life group before you guys get into the word if you just do a little bit of exercise you're going to be more alert more engaged more focused you're gonna have a lot more energy to get deep into the word of god and um just you know be more me more focused well, I like that idea so much. We're going to start doing that every Sunday morning in our services. We're going to do five to ten minutes of exercises so you guys will stay awake. All right. I hope you've uh, uh, benefited from this time. And, and Diana, thank you so much. I know you're a busy mom now and a uh, professor and all kinds of things and a wonderful wife. And But thank you so much. And to your husband as well, too, for allowing, making this happen today. Thanks. Well, thanks so much. Man, I can't even tell you what a blessing that was. I'm challenged. Uh, I'm encouraged and uh, I'm ready to do even more to get my body in shape and ready for the long haul. If the Lord tarries, if he doesn't come back in our lifetime, I don't want to leave any sooner than what the Lord has for me. So I'm committed to getting up and moving, to get up and take action. I hope you are too. Thanks so much for joining us again at Momentum Fitness.